quarter of adults in Britain are so obsessed with cleaning and tidying that they spend over four years of their waking lives on household chores. With many feeling compelled to abide by strict regimes and rituals. So I paint the floor once or twice a day. So much easier than having the carpet cleaned. What I like to do is just to get like a nice sort of egg shape to the cloth. I could lick that brim. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but for most of us, keeping our homes clean and tidy is not a priority. With over 65% of us admitting cleaning the kitchen is one of our most loathed tasks. What the hell is that? Looks like a black pudding. Including the microwave that has been proven to harbour the most germs. It's just filth. I know it's there, but I don't look. Can a group of obsessive cleaners transform the habits of a nation? Hip, hip, hit off! She wants to keep the pan. Oh, this is to turn the light on. Are you actually having a laugh? It's been like this nearly enough for years. Or will this prove too much? No, 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 don't even go there. <coughs> for the people whose need for perfection... One, two, three, four. ...has become an obsession. It seems to be human hair. Why can't you throw things away? But you're just questioning me like I'm some kind of a div and I'm sick of it. Thirty-year-old single mum and hairdresser Gemma from Hertfordshire is meticulous at work and at home. After the salon, she cleans for two hours each night, getting through a pack of anti-back wipes to keep her two-bedroom home immaculate. I wipe my bed frame. I think I'd have to be on my deathbed not to wake up and do it. When I have friends over, I always like to give it a wipe over so they know they're sitting on a clean sofa. Her favourite cleaning tool is her hoover, and she gets through two a year. I like seeing lines when I'm hoovering in my carpet. It just makes it look tidy and fresh. Sometimes I get a blister there from where I hoover so much. <laughs> I call my toilet my throne, and only my friends and family are allowed to sit on it. Gemma's friends, Luke and Hugh, know this only too well. I feel guilty just doing a wee in that toilet. <laughs> yeah. You have got to relax a little bit. I know, I know. Let's hope this experience will make me chill out a bit more and I won't be so... <sighs> Gemma hopes that by spending four days away from her obsessive rituals, she'll be able to cut back on the cleaning. I'm hoping that doing this will help me realise there's a lot more other things I probably could be doing than worrying about my last antibacterial wipe. So Gemma has travelled 50 miles to Kent to help someone whose attitudes to cleaning are very different from her own. Not everybody gets me. I'm one of them people, you either love me or you hate me, I'm like Marmite. Looks like a ghetto. I can't imagine what inside's going to be like if it's like this out here. I do, I feel physically sick, like I could throw up. The 53-year-old Jim's four-bedroom terraced house is packed with over 10 tonnes of bargains collected over the last 25 years. My home is my palace, really. Most of the stuff I've collected has come from boot fairs, charity shops, and finding stuff out on the streets. Now this is to turn the light on, because it's such a job to get over to the old light, light switch. So I can just do it like that. That's it. Oh. Jim's boot fair hoards include 3,000 items of women's clothing, 250 pairs of shoes, countless hats and wigs. I've always been into the girl stuff. No, oh, because I'm a secret girly, really. <laughs> Divorcee and father of two, Jim, cross-dresses and is also known as Cathy. It'd be just nice to be able to walk like round the floor, like in your heels because at the moment you, you slip up. The scale of Jim's hoard means he hasn't cleaned in 10 years. There's no point of cleaning it because uh, I'm going to chuck something more down on the floor. With all his clutter overflowing into a double and single garage, he's finally realised he needs help. 
but it's hard to get like motivated like when the place is like this. It's just like a disease. I reckon I'll end up getting buried amongst all the stuff. Gemma will have just four days to clear Jim's hoard. Oh God, I feel like I want to wash my hands already. Come on, it's all right. Hi. All right then. Hi, I'm Gemma. Yeah, yeah well, I'm Jim anyway. Hiya. Do you want to come in, do you? Um. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. It's a little bit dirty, but. Uh, I'd say very. Come in, I'll show you around. Well, this is my bedroom. You can take a look there. Are you actually having a laugh? <laughs> that is my bedroom. No, it's not. <laughs> it is. But there's even, like, flies in here. Well, this is my living room. This is why I sit and do everything. And this is where I sleep as well. I'm absolutely mesmerised by it. Like, if you saw this every day, you'll get used to it. I could never in a million <laughs> years ever, ever get used to this, ever. This is my kitchen. Oh, my God. What? What? Do you know what, like, antibacterial wipes are? Do you, do you use well, them? No, 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 no. I'm sweating, I'm coming over really hot. I think I'm going to have to stand outside here for a minute. Sorry. If she's like this now, you know, I don't know what she's going to be like when we start moving stuff. Because I don't even know what's going to be under there, so... This is the bathroom. You've got a lot of um, women's products, nail varnishes, makeup. Oh, I like to be a little bit girly now and then. And there's all makeup in there. Oh, whoa, whoa. What's that a wig? Oh, yeah. my God. What oh, is yeah. that? Yeah, that's just a like, little extension. Just uh, a little extension. OK. Did you dress up as a woman? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I do a lot of that. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that, Jim, but they need to be put away somewhere <laughs> nice and tidy. Horrified at the state of Jim's home, Gemma wants to show him the standards she enforces at hers. Do you want me to make you a cup or do you want a drink? Um, I don't think I do, Jim. Sure, I've got uh, plenty in the fridge. Yeah, no, I'll take a rain check on that, no. <laughs> this is my kitchen. I hoover all my kitchen sides. The thing is, it looks like too much like a showroom, don't it? Like, just too new. But oh. I think that's how people should live. I think that's normal. That's the toilet. This is my baby, if yeah. you like. And that's the phone. That's gold toilet yeah. seat. So that's my bath. That's my toilet. It's all too posh. All too posh. I, but I, I think so. Because it's yeah. clean, you think it's posh. But it's not. It's just clean. It's not posh. I wouldn't even let a pig live in there. It's that dirty. Something obviously has gone well wrong somewhere for someone to end up, because that is a mess. He is in a pickle. Yeah, I think I'm going to have a fight on my hands. Stuff what she's going to think is rubbish, you know, and I know it's not rubbish, so I'm going to have to educate her and tell her, you know, like, that I'm keeping that. Horrible. A third of us admit to vacuuming only once a week. But for others, the Hoover is the most used gadget in the home. Come on, baby boy. 62-year-old grandmother Angie spends four hours every day keeping her three-bedroom bungalow in Hampshire spotless. I wash my floor twice a day, once in the morning, and in the evening just before I go to bed because there's one thing I cannot abide is dirty floors. Oh, I have got bad knees but then it's not painful. I'll just get on with it. I'm a woman. Women do these things. It gives me satisfaction and I feel good when it's done. If I won the lottery, I would not have a cleaner. I like my bed to be dressed. There's nothing nicer than walking into a room and seeing a nice dressed bed. I call my over my little darling, my baby, because he's my best friend. My partner says to me, is that 
bloody hoover frightened of the dark, you never put it away. Angie's partner of nine years, Michael, has had to learn to live with her obsessive cleaning. I get told off very much for not putting my clothes away. Muddy shoes. Spilling sugar, splashing water all over the sink. Angie hopes that by helping someone less fastidious than herself, she can learn to cut back on her own chores. I might be able to be a bit more lax than I am, because although I don't think I'm over the top, maybe sometimes I am. You look after yourself. Keep the house tidy yeah. and don't forget to dress the bed, will you? No, I won't. Love you. You have a good time. Bye bye. Don't give them too hard a time, will you? Bye. Bye bye, love. Angie has travelled 120 miles to Kent to help someone with a completely different attitude to cleanliness. I don't think anything's going to faze me. I've cleaned most things up in my life with having four children. Oh! <laughs> 77-year-old Brian lives in his three-bedroom semi-detached with two dogs and 37 owls. This is Albie. This is a male barn owl. It really was love at first sight. Look at those eyes. Widow O'Brien set up the Folkestone Owl Sanctuary over 20 years ago to rescue orphan owls. He cares for every species native to the UK. Ooh. This is the my 26th year, and the passion's still glowing. But the animals have taken over to the detriment of Brian's home. Four baby owls have even taken up residence on Brian's dining table. They must be fed five times a day with cut up chicken chicks sourced from a specialist zoo supplier. Brian's home hasn't had a good clean since his wife died two years ago. Things started going wrong about four years ago when my wife started to get ill. I was thrown in the deep end. I had to do jobs I didn't know how to do. I give up with, with, with dusting. I think to myself, why bother if it's just for me? Oh, don't do that. Brian and his school friend, also called Brian, were both born in the 1930s, where men weren't expected to do the housework. From a bloke's point of view, it isn't a priority. Uh, uh, yeah. From yes. a woman's point of view, it is. Yes. It doesn't mean to be sexist, but a woman knows how to make a house into a home. I'm desperate for help. Really desperate. Hello. Hello. I'm Angie. Hello, Angie. Jack, come in. Oh, lovely dog. Yeah, that's Pensioner that, Angie that's has just four days to declutter, clean Hello. and organise Brian's house Welcome into a home, home fit madness. for humans. Right, Angie, this is my dining room. Um, meet some of my family. Oh, dear. I do have a bit of a phobia about birds, mm -hmm. I have to be honest with you. OK. OK. And What's the, that? This is their food. These are dead, day old chicks. Oh, dear. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, do you mind? No. I can't watch that. No, OK, right, we'll put that away then. Do you actually have a hoover? Yes. That's dog hair, isn't it? That's dog hair, yes. Yeah. What's this down here, then? That's the dog's food. I don't mean to be rude to no. you, but I think this is why the room's a little bit whiffy. Ah, well, I, well, there you go. Let's come through and see the kitchen. Please don't scream too Lord. loud. Lordy, lordy, lordy. What's tell, this? Tell a woman. That's nothing for the yes, owls, is yes, it? Yes, it is. Brian, there's got to be a better way to do it than this, Good. my little this is, lovey, this is, honestly. This is what you're here for. The reason I don't do any cleaning indoors is because what I do outside, and I would like to show you what I do. Does it, can he fly away? He can't reach me, can he? No. Oh, look, he's looking at me. Because he is. I've taught him to appreciate beauty. Mm. Oh, he is lovely, but I can't come any closer, that's Brian. That's, that's fine. I appreciate what you're doing. It's the flapping bit. Yes, yes. Mm. It's just yeah, a total I, phobia about flapping. I appreciate that, yes. Well, should we go 
carry on going through the house now, shall we? Certainly. This is my bedroom. Uh, oh, dearie me. How can you sleep in this, Brian? Well, I don't have to make a bed. You've done what you've done with the living room, haven't you? Put things down and put clutter on top of them. He's going to have to pull himself together a little bit more. He spends all his time with the birds, but he's not even living in comfortable surroundings. Before Angie starts, she wants to make sure Brian understands her cleaning routines at home. Right, Brian, I spend about three to four hours a day cleaning my house. That's the bed, and I make it like that every day, and it makes the bed look tidy, don't you think? Oh, yes, it makes the bed look very tidy. The lounge gets dusted and polished every day. The kitchen floor gets washed twice a day. If I was to do what you do, I wouldn't spend any time out there. They can't do the jobs for themselves. They can't, I understand They can't that. clean their beds. So are you saying you're less important than the owls? Yes, yes, I am. Right. As long as she doesn't come between me and my owls, we're fine. In Kent, it's the first day of the clean. Gemma, who is not OCD diagnosed, has a plan to help sort Jim's 10-year hoard of women's work. Right, Jim, these are the boxes. Keep, sell, charity. OK? Yes. In four days, she plans to clear and clean his kitchen, bathroom and bedroom. It is a massive challenge and I am worried because I've never seen anything like it. I mean, it's up to the ceiling. Oh, God. I've got to get in here. It's the only way around it. You can step right over. Jim, what have you got in here? A lot of it all comes from the boot fairs because uh, I go to the boot fairs nearly every week. But, mate, most of this stuff is like worth a good bit of money. So, like, uh, you know, you buy it to make money. But obviously you're not making any money because it's just sitting in here. I think you've got a problem. Only a little problem. Oh, Jim. Look at that. That's a nice You've light. got a massive problem. It's hard to let things go because even though like she thinks it's like rubbish, you know, like, I know what I could get for it if I took it to the boot fair. I don't know if she knows like what things are worth. Panties? Yeah, they're new. Oh, yeah. brand new, right? Yeah, they're new. Oh, is this when you oh, Sheila yeah. or Shirley or? Yeah, that's. Oh, Jim. Stinks. That's all right, that just needs a wash. Oh, that needs more than a wash. That looked perfect, that one. No, it won't. It's got to go in the bin, Jim. Come on. So when did you start sort of cross-dressing? What? When did you start? I mean... Well, that's all when I was, like, a little boy. Do you know what I mean? About ten. What, you just sort of wearing your mum's clothes, or...? Some of my mum's, but I used to go around charity shops, then, do you know what I mean? And just, like, like dressing up. It just feels nice. All the clothes feel good. You can look pretty, can't you? As that's the case, we could make this to, like, say, your girly room. Still got to have a few collectibles about, though, because that's still part yes, of me. Yes, Jim. Can't get out, can you? <laughs> yeah. Charity. Charity. So, charity. Bit. I, was, I was keeping that, I was keeping oh, that Oh no, one. Jim, come on. Yeah, it just needs a wash. It's disgusting, it please. No, 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 but once it's washed... No, Jim, come on. That, that's that's I'll sentimental. Keep... It's been on the floor, it looks like it's been on fire, and, oh my God, he wants to keep it. Sweat is dripping off him from the panic. I actually think I'm in hell. Put it in the bin. It Jim, it it's here. disgusting. No, no, I can keep that one. There's going to be loads more argument. She just wants it clean, you know, like, all she sees is clean, you know, and uh, all I see is treasure. One in 50 people in Britain is diagnosed with obsessive compulsive disorder. For some, this can manifest itself in an extreme fear of germs, resulting in a compulsion to obsessively clean. I probably clean the bath about four times a week, just scrubbing to the point the bleach burns my eyes. Mum of three, Hayley, was diagnosed with OCD in 2007 and gets through a bottle of bleach a day, making sure her home is as surgically clean as possible. The triggers are mainly based around my children. I worry that if I don't carry out certain rituals that they'll get sick and then die. But what I'm trying to do now is 
face my fears and realise that that's not going to happen. To help her and fellow OCD sufferers and obsessive cleaners confront their need to clean, each week Hayley will visit their houses to explore if excessive time spent on cleaning is worth it. Get in there! Joining Hayley this time is fellow obsessive cleaner, mum of two, Lindsay from Peterborough, who spends over 20 hours a week cleaning. I buy a lot of bleach. But I've just been shopping and I just wipe them down with bleach and a bit of boiled water. Let it dry straight in the cupboard. First stop, South Yorkshire. Home to full-time fitness instructor, 52-year-old Vinny. Hi. Ladies. Hello. Hi. Hi, you how are you? Lindsay. I'm Lindsay. Vinny's not OCD diagnosed, but spends up to three entire months a year cleaning and tidying his house. The reason why I use a toothbrush is because it gets into all those little corners that a cloth cannot get into. OK, girls, this is my bathroom where I oh, get myself ready for the day. My shower head, I leave it in mixed bleach morning and night. This is where I spend a lot of time. One thing I'm very, very proud of, my oven. That is clean. That's clean, yeah. Well, so when people come know. round, you show them your oven. Yeah, yeah, I'm proud of that. Right then, ladies. This, this is, is nice. Oh, lovely. Right, so your rug. Be interested to see what you do. So I use a, a normal carpet powder, um, put it on, take it outside, shake it off, then I hoover it. But my final thing, all I do is just, just spray. It's a surface cleaner. Vinny cleans his rug twice a day and spends up to three hours a well, week on it alone. I think you could cut all that out if you just had either a steamer or a carpet cleaner, a proper, like, you know. Just do a measure on it, yeah, because that roller running against the carpet, which yeah, is dirty. Do you not, I clean the bottom of my roller. Do don't you? you bleach them in the sink? Your hoover? Yeah. No, I don't. My hoover, you're spotless. OK, well, guys, I think there's only one way to see. <laughs> To gauge how clean Vinny's rug really is, they're taking a swab to use in an antibacterial measuring device. You're all stressed, aren't you? Yeah, I am. A score of less than 500 is clean enough to eat your dinner off. All right. It's 330. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm very happy with that. Well done, Vinny. Thank you very yeah, much. Well done. I would have liked lower, anybody would like lower, but, you know, at the end of the day, as long as it was below that 500, then, you know, I'm very happy with the, the result. Next, Hayley and Vinny are off to test obsessive cleaner Lindsay's home. Can she beat Vinny's score? I feel I've got a lot to live up to, although I don't think I've got anything to worry about. In Folkestone, at the Owl Sanctuary, it's day one of the clean. Dog's bones. Oh, dog's bones. Deary me. Pensioner Angie has left her partner and pristine bungalow in Hampshire and has just four days to get Widow O'Brien's living room, bedroom and kitchen shipshape. Take that over there for a minute. Yes, teacher. Right, what would you like to put up there, Brian? Well, I'd like that the photograph of our wedding. We were married 50 years. She a beautiful girl. She kept me in tow. I'm going pride a place. Right, have you found any rubbish to put in this bin yet? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Three bits of paper. Almost like being married, isn't it? Is it? <laughs> <laughs> I like it. No, because you wouldn't be living in a state like that if you were no, married to me. No, this is true. Me, he's looking at me. Get to your sleep, you. <laughs> Angie, who is not OCD diagnosed, but uses four bottles of bleach weekly, is determined to get Brian's house spotless. But Brian's getting on with his daily owl chores. I can't believe he's having the bath pressure washed. He's doing it for his owls, and he doesn't care what sort of state he lives in. Brian, what are you doing? Getting the food ready for the owls. Oh, not on the work surface. No, it's on the bit of paper. You shouldn't be preparing animal food where you do the human food. This is what I've done for over 20 years. Oh. Hello, babies. Yeah, then. Fresh air. You seen these cages? They're immaculate. Why don't they keep his house like that? The owls have defeated me. They've come in before anything else in his life. This? 
owls got to be fed, owls got to be cleaned, owls this, owls that, all owls. Oh yes, please, Daddy. I feel like saying, give up and go home. I won't, but that's really, really what I would like to do. In Kent, it's the second day of the clean, and with 20 boxes of clothes and collectibles sorted from the bedroom, anti backwipe obsessed Gemma is now facing her biggest challenge, Jim's kitchen. I am dreading it. It wouldn't surprise me if I throw up. Before Gemma can clean, they must first clear the floor and surfaces, which haven't been seen in 10 years. Grumpy but gorgeous. So I've got to keep that. Keep them. Oh, Jim. What is that? I look like some plums. Well, oh, don't touch it. Ah! <gasps> Just speechless. As they continue to work through the layers of Jim's kitchen, Gemma uncovers yet another surprise. Oh, I've just found a mouse, Jim. Did you? It's horrendous, look. Oh! Ah! Oh, oh, oh. No, no, don't bring it any further to me. He's even started to rot. It's making me want cry. I'm not being funny. If I had my way, I'd be knocking it down and starting again. I just, it's just absolutely beyond me. Beyond me. In Folkestone, hygiene obsessed Angie is attacking Brian's owl sanctuary home. Oh! <laughs> needs an industrial machine. With the living room and kitchen decluttered and only a day to go, Angie's continuing her battle with the animals. That will deter you, I'm glad to see. I bought the biscuits. You've in. got the duck, duck biscuits, biscuits in, in the here. kitchen. Yes, yeah, like you asked me to. She's managed to get the owls off the dining table. Oh, bad pool on the table. To a new home in the corner of the living room. Before bird-phobic Angie can progress further with the clean, she needs to find a solution to Brian fixing owl food in the kitchen. I'm seeing if there's somewhere in here that he could prepare his owl food. <coughs> so, Brian, what do you think about if we clear that little corner and we can put that unit in there? I'm really <coughs> prepared to give it a really good try. Uh, and I think it will be successful. Stay in there. Sorry, Angie. It's not your fault, but I think I've wet myself. Oh dear. I'm all right now. Okay. Okay. Right. So next on my list is the kitchen. At home, grandmother of five, Angie scrubs her kitchen floor twice a day to get it germ-free. Where does this obsession of, of germs come from? Is it being passed down through your family? To be quite honest, yeah, because my dad was in the forces, so you can imagine what a man in the forces is like. My mum used to do a blitz in our house every single Sunday, and I think we were just brought up like it, and we've always been like it. Would it hurt you that much to leave it one day? I know my partner's not overstruck on me, the amount of work I do, and I've always got the hoover out, always ready to go. It never gets put away. But I am really going to try... Put the hoover away. That bit I can't do yet. In Kent, after three hours of decluttering, the kitchen's finally cleared. Right, we're going to have to start by getting some of the dirt off Jim. Single mum Gemma, who goes through a pack of anti-back wipes daily, can now tackle the kitchen surfaces that haven't been seen for eight years. And I am obsessed with antibacterial wipes. These are my best friend. What made you exactly like be like, like this? Mine's like three generations. My nan was really clean. And then my mum, 
is just the same. same. Even with my son, as soon as he's eating chocolate, he asks for a wipe yeah. and he's not quite two and a half. Gemma's son, he's most people going like, to end up like mum, you know, clean all the time, and that run through, like, his generation. So we've gone from black... To white. To white. Yes, Jim. <laughs> High five, yes. Two days into the clean, with 20 bags of rubbish and 40 boxes cleared, Jim can finally see how much he's letting go of. It's a funny feeling. You know, it's most probably like joy, but like then like a, you know, sadness as well, you know, cos everything's gone. Oh, don't cry. I'm all right. Oh, Jim. What are you upset about, seeing it clean or getting rid of stuff? Both, both. See, cos it's all part of me, ain't it? It's all part of me, do you know what I mean? But it's good seeing it clean, but, like, uh, you know, that's all my stuff, do you know what I mean? It's like you, you've thrown all your belongings away, do you know what I mean? I do understand, but I think once you see the end result, then again you'll feel better again. I think it's all a roller coaster, ain't it? At the beginning, I didn't think he was that bothered about sorting this out and getting it done, but the fact that he has really got so emotional shows that he must care so much and want to get it sorted. The average healthy person comes into contact with millions of germs every day without getting ill. But for some sufferers of OCD, germs can be a terrifying prospect, with their anxiety often resulting in cleaning compulsions and ritualistic behaviour. With Vinny's rug tested... 330 Yeah, 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 yeah! It's now the turn of obsessive cleaner Lindsay's home. What I'm hoping to achieve out of today is, is to actually prove to myself that I am actually the queen of clean. No one's going to beat me. Hi, guys. Hi. In you come. Hi, Just come straight through. Lindsay, who is not OCD diagnosed, can vacuum her house up to 20 times a day. So this is the bathroom. It is spotlessly clean. You won't find any dirt in here. It looks clean. Yeah, it does, as a matter of fact. So this is the kitchen. This is where we spend most of our time. It fills my heart with joy in this kitchen. Does it? Yeah. I'm so pleased. It's so nice. Thank you. Right, guys, this is the lounge. Oh, it's lovely. As you can see. My only rule with the rug is I just don't tolerate shoes on it. To keep her rug fresh and clean, Mum of two, Lindsay, uses a J-cloth soaked in a mixture of water, washing up liquid and fabric softener. So how often will you um, do this then? I'll do this once a day, steamed twice a day, morning and evening, but then it's hoovered constantly 20 to 30 times a day. Really? Honestly, yeah. I think we should swab it. Vinny scored 336 on his rug and Lindsay's hoping to better that result. 500 or under is clean enough to eat your dinner off. It's not a zero, just put it that 74. way. Oh, 74. Oh, bloody hell. That's not too bad. It's still a good result, and I still smashed Vinny's result, didn't I? Literally smashed it. I've learned life is for living, not for cleaning, but I do enjoy it. People will probably be shocked to hear me say it, but I'm glad that my house isn't as clean as Lindsay's. I manage the OCD, it doesn't manage me. Back in Folkestone, with the downstairs sorted and only half a day left, Angie's getting ready to move upstairs. It's time to take on Brian's bedroom that hasn't been cleaned since his wife Sybil died two years ago. Oh my, it's got a lot of stuff in it, hasn't it? So it has, yes. Oh, and what's this, Brian? My wife's wedding oh, dress. Oh, it is, isn't it? Why have you got it in the bedroom? Why have you not got it packed away somewhere safe? So I can look at it and think of Sybil. I won't forget her, but it, it's a sort of a... You want a few memories, don't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, just, just to, to look at it and you. remember what, what she looked like when she wore it. I miss her a lot. I see her occasionally in my dreams and all that. What do you find the hardest? Being by myself. This is why. I, I've been like I have with the house. And you wonder who you're doing it all for because she's not around? Yes, yeah. OK. Yeah. She had come here to help me and help as she has. I realise what I've got to do. 
I've got to balance the work that I do out here with the owls with the work that is needed to do in, in, in the house. I know you love me. Yes, I know, chirp, chirp, chirp. In Kent, it's day three of the four-day clean. After building up 30 boxes to sell, Gemma has suggested a jumble sale in the car park behind Jim's house to make him some money. I want to show Jim today just how easy it is to get rid of stuff and it will make a difference to his life. Jim's got one final surprise for Gemma. He wants her to meet Cathy. Even though she knows I cross dress, it's going to be a shock because I don't really look like Jim when I like dressed up anyway. Hi, Jim. I'm all right. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's different. Oh, you crack me up. <laughs> oh, you look like Cher. It's a bit shocking and a bit... Whew, but that's what Jim loves to do, so... Let's go, let's get this stuff sold. Come on, girl. Girly, girly girl. Jim and Gemma have managed to put 30 dresses, 30 pairs of shoes, six belts and numerous antiques and knick-knacks up for sale. I'm going to show you how easy it is, Jim, to sort of try and make some money out of it. It's what you love to do, remember? Three quid. Come on, Jim, you need to get rid of it. All right, as I know you. Yeah, 50. Yeah, 150. I didn't want to get rid of that, but that's another one of the things I had to get rid of. See, but Jim, it's the way forward. It's what you want to be doing. Jim loves the idea of a jumble sale, and I think he's got all good intentions, but I think he actually don't really want to depart with it. The next customer comes across something Jim was intending to keep. No, it's my belt. Is it? Yeah, it's damn in that part. Jim, 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 come here, that's why we're yeah. here. No, Sell that belt. No, that's in my, that pole. But oh, Jim, that, that's, it, that's in the keep box. That was that was a pound then. Go on, well done, Jim. Well done. I didn't want to get rid of that belt because that was at my keep box, but that's a start maybe. Like for like getting rid of more stuff. What I said, Jim, and I like she's good. Like she's pushing me all the time. Can't get your money out. Two pound. That's it. 50p. I've got to say bye bye to it. You have, Jim. This is your new life now. <laughs> no more holding. He's actually surprising me. He's been really willing because I think he's got to that point where he knows he's got to go. After only a couple of hours, they've sold over 15 items, making an honest £20. But today, it's not the money that counts. You glad that we've. Come up with but this. it's only you who's been pushing me to sell it. You mean like if you hadn't come here to start cleaning my place, well, I would have like. So you're glad there. now? Well, I'm glad I met you. Yeah. Yeah. You you're totally mad, aren't you? Eh? Mm. Totally mad. Mm. At the owl sanctuary, the clean is nearly over. Angie's organised a professional carpet cleaner for the living room and all the rubbish has been cleared out. And Angie's applying her final feminine touches. Could do with an iron. I don't suppose Brian will mind a little bit of creasing, will he? Brian's most prized ornaments are on display and the place has been purged of animal smells. Even Brian's adding his own finishing touches. I'm going to now use this for cutting out the food, keep the flies out, and the smell. Brian's friend, also called Brian, is back for a visit. Hi, Brian. Hello, Liam. How are you, mate? Hello, matey. This is my clean angel, Angie. Pleased to meet Pleased you, Pleased to meet Brian. you, too. Please enter. Before, widower Brian's living and dining room was overrun with baby owls and the carpet thick with dog hair. This is the lounge. Very nice. My God, the carpet's got colour. <laughs> <laughs> What's the big thing you notice in here? Room. And? Cleanliness. Got his owls in the corner. It's easier and it's cleaner. It's better for when people come in and not see them on the table. 
The kitchen was used to prepare animal food and was a magnet for flies. Now the counters have been cleared and the floor's been scrubbed clean. That's one hell of a difference. It's how it should be. It's given me a, a, something to aim for, a standard to keep up to. I'm running up to, to the next room. Since his wife died two years ago, Brian's bedroom has been a disorganised dumping ground. Now Angie's made the bed to her standards and the treasured wedding dress has pride of place. Come with me, men. In we come. Wow. <laughs> That's never been like that before. And I've also ordered something very special with for you. What do you think? Doesn't that come up beautiful? Yes, yes. Um. Rather emotional. <laughs> and it's very embarrassing, but there you go. Um, that's it. I can't put it into words. What she has done lifted me up a lot, especially the wedding dress. That was beautiful. You keep this place yeah. like that and I'll ease up on the cleaning. <laughs> You're gorgeous. All right. Safe journey, darling. Yeah, and you take yeah, care take of care yourself. Sweetheart. All right, then. Yeah. I know now that a little nice. bit of dirt and a little bit of clutter doesn't hurt. I'm going back to do my floors once a day, not nag at Michael to pick things up, not telling him to keep putting things away, and I think he'd be happy with that. In Kent, it's the last day of the clean, and with over 50 boxes of Jim's hoard cleared from the house to either sell or give to charity, Gemma has just got enough time to do the finishing touches to the bathroom. This is unbelievable. That's the bottle gone. Every room I've said, oh my God, I can see no light at the end of the tunnel. Didn't think we were going to get anywhere. To be honest, I can't believe we've got it done. It's mad. Jim's dad, Jim Senior, hasn't been able to come round for 10 years. Jim's house was disgusting, really disgusting. If it is an improvement, his mother and I can come over now and again and have a cup of tea. Hello, Hello. Daddy. Hello, Jim. Well, you come to have a look, have you? Four days ago, Jim's bedroom was stuffed full with ten years' worth of clutter and you couldn't see the bed. Now the room has been cleared, allowing him space to enjoy dressing up again as Kathy with his wig in pride of place. Dear, it's just the same place. Yeah. I'm in the wrong house. So you've got your girly room. You've even got to keep your 30-year-old wig, Jim. Yeah, I know. That I, I so got... wanted to get rid of. <laughs> Unbelievable. Jim's bathroom was a makeup cluttered mess with no room to walk on the floor. Now it's been cleaned to be used properly for the first time in ages. No. Look. God almighty. Oh, this was terrible. Somebody must have done a magic wand over it all. <laughs> no dust. No dust, Jim. I can see it in my own. Yeah, they know what you look like. Yeah. It's better with dust on it. <laughs> 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 Before, Jim's kitchen was hidden under piles of his belongings, dead mice and thick dirt. It's now been cleared out with the sides decluttered, ready for Jim to start entertaining his family. I can't believe it. I can't believe this. You've done a brilliant job. Uh, <laughs> You've worked a miracle. you made me a bit emotional. It's just nice to see it clean. Oh, you're all right. But at least you can come over with your wife now, have tea. Exactly. Do you think she'll be shocked? <sighs> shocked? Well, I better not bring her over in case she's a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't realise that it was going to affect you, like, emotionally, do you know what I mean? Cos you don't know until it hits. Until <laughs> it hits her, do you know what I mean? So, like, it just... It just hits her. 
lovely to meet you. Oh, there we go. So thanks a lot. I come here with that intention of maybe trying to relax with the cleaning and stuff, but I actually can't wait to get home and clean. I know that sounds mad, but I can't. And these are for you, Jim. Antibacterial wipes. Yep. Your new best friend, Jim. It's nice. Okay. I can't believe how much my life has changed in the last few days. Do you know what I mean? And uh, I don't want to get in a state again. And I won't hold and hold. Well, I won't.